Do you need an animal pole arm main DPS that plays like a trampoline? Well, you're in luck. Zhao. We're going to be doing a character breakdown on what we already know and hopefully what's soon to come. For the most recent 1.3 news, we now have Zhao completely confirmed for 1.3. So let's go ahead and take a look at his kit, see if you should summon for him or not, and we'll find out if he's the character for you. All the information used is from Honey Impact, so give them credit down below. As per usual, we have a level 80 Zhao, level 6 talents, base HP 11,236, base attack 308, base defense of 705. Now these stats are pretty, pretty good. As for health, pretty high up there, you know, typical 5 star units, very strong HP pool. As for attack, he is the highest attack stat in the game so far. Recently we just had Ganyu, Ganyu was the highest, now it's Zhao. And for defense, Again, still pretty high, so his stats are really, really good. He gains crit rate as he levels up and ascends, up to 19.4%, which is actually the first character that I think has increased crit rate. I'm not sure. I know most characters have increased crit damage, but I've never seen crit rate. Pretty interesting, pretty cool on that part. Very good stats to start off with. As far as ascensions and talents, we have the Animal Hypostasis drops, Juvenile Jades, which is going to be the new drop that comes out from the world boss. Not sure how to pronounce those flowers, but they're on your screen. Slime Condensate, Secretion, and Concentrate. Teachings of Prosperity. To get talents past level 10, we have Shadow of the Warrior and the Crown of Sagehood. Now first things first, Zhao is a very, very friendly character to new players or people who don't want to deal with complicated mechanics. It's very straightforward, very simple. For his normal attack, basic 6 strike attack. On his charge attack, he only has 1 strike. And his plunge attack is where it's going to get a little juicy. Now his plunge attack is going to be his core thing, his core mechanic. Kind of how each character has their own sort of gimmick that makes them unique. For Zhao, it's going to be his plunge attack in this case. So it could go up to 200. 37% to 297, up to 300. Not only that, his normal attacks do have some pretty high multipliers, 78%, 94, 98, 131. He has a polearm character, forgot to mention that. So he will be attacking relatively quickly, as most polearm characters do. Onto his elemental skill, when cycling, it's a 10 second cooldown, and it's pretty straightforward, it's just a dash. You can do it in midair and you have a max of two charges and it does very very good damage 353 percent very high multiplier this is like ult damage for some units so very very good on that that being said he's gonna be very very good at traveling whether it's just running across land or even just trying to get to a far location in the air while you're gliding very simple move very straightforward nothing else to it on to his elemental burst bane of evil 18 second cooldown 70 energy cost right in the middle between hefty and average energy cost. A little bit of energy recharge might be pretty good to have. Shao goes into Yaksha Mask form for 15 seconds. As for the Yaksha Mask properties, it increases its jump height, being able to do plunge attacks. If you guys seen any demos of beta testers using Zhao, you can see how when they ultimate they just jump and spam the plunge attack. This is where that comes in handy. It converts its damage to Animo, increases its attack AoE, and of course its damage 77% increase. And while under this form, you take a damage over time, which is 2.5 percent of your max HP. Now this can go down as you level up your talents, so the higher you get this, the least you'll be taking. Again, very simple ultimate. It's another form stance change, similar to Hu Tao, Child, even Noel kind of, where you just get a buff and you do some really awesome things. Really user friendly for new players who are just trying to have a nice character on their team without having to worry about too many mechanics. Now what's good about Zhao is that he is going to be a solo DPS. While in this form, probably won't be switching to any other character. You probably pop in your sub DPS's elemental skill or burst and then you just be running Zhao. So the cool thing about Zhao is that he's going to be a solo DPS. Pop in your ultimate, do your jump, plunge attack, jump, plunge attack, or even your normal attack if you want to. Depends on how you want to build him. You got your dashes to move around as well as do some really, really good damage. So yeah, pretty simple. As for his passive and constellations, this is where things get pretty nice. First we have Gravity to Fire. Decreases climb stamina consumption by 20%. Non-staggable, meaning this is the only buff you can get if you have somebody else on your team that decreases climb stamina consumption, then it's not gonna stack. Next we have Conqueror of Evil, Tamer of Demons. Every three seconds in Yaksha Mask form, plus 5% increase to all damage. Max up to 25%. Again, simple buff. As long as you're in the form, you get more damage. So you want to keep him out on the field, similar to Razor, as much as you can. So if you could keep him there for the entire duration, you're going to get some really, really nice damage. The solution of Eons, Heaven's Fall. Every dash increases future dashes by 15%. Last 7 seconds, new stacks, refresh duration. So pretty much when you dash, every subsequent dash after that, it's going to increase its damage by 15%. As for its constellations, we have Dissolution, Eon, Destroyer of Worlds. 
dash plus one max charge, so you're gonna have a total of three charges now. Very good value for a C1 at that. Next we have Annihilation Eon, Blossom of Kaladios, Energy Recharge plus 25%, when not on the field. So when you switch out to your sub DPS or you switch out to somebody else, his energy recharge increases. As for his C3 and 5, elemental skill and burst plus 3 as usual. As for C4, plus 100% defense when HP is below 50%. You're taking a lot of damage, you don't want to switch to your healer because you still got time left on your ultimate, you're going to get a little more tanky, helps with survivability. As for C6, Conqueror of Evil, Guardian Yaksha. When two charge attacks hit, you get a dash charge, and for the next one second, you can dash ignoring its cooldown. So this will help out with changing your rotation from plunge attack to dash attack to plunge attack to dash attack making your damage really really high during your 15 seconds in the yaksha mask form c6 pretty good it's going to help out a lot in your rotation and increase your damage overall pretty good constellations again this is similar to how i said with jing chu that you're getting value every constellation you get you're not missing out on anything the only time i'd say the constellation isn't worth it is maybe c4 because survivability isn't too big of a deal but in the end survivability is still pretty good if you're fighting enemies that hit really hard maybe bosses in the future that have certain mechanics this might help out a lot but personally c1 Zhao, i'd say i go for a c1 Zhao because the plus one dash is going to help out pretty much in everything travel damage but even a c0 still pretty good now for his weapon and artifact builds, we got a bunch of different options for you guys. For 5 stars, we have Primordial Jade Wing Spear, increases your crit rate, attack percent on hit for 6 seconds, max stacks of 7, and when you have max stacks, 12% increase in damage, so overall, pretty good. I'm pretty sure this is a signature weapon, Primordial Jade Wing Spear, so if you have one, congrats on you, pretty lucky. Next we have Vortex Vanquisher, it's attack percent. And I know this has shield strength, but it increases your attack by 4%, max up to 5 stacks, last 8 seconds. When you're under a shield, it doubles the effect, meaning let's say you run a Zhongli on your team or somebody with crystallized reactions or just any shield, you're, you could get up to 40% increased attack at a Refinement 1 Vortex Vanquisher. Now if you don't run shields on your team, then probably Primordial Jade Spear would be better or any of these next ones. Just want to mention none of these are ordered, these are all just weapons. From top to bottom, it's not ordered whether it's the best or worst, it's just by category. So back to it, Prototype Star Glitter, Energy Recharge, Normal and Charge Attack, plus 8% on Elemental Skill, max up to 2 stacks so you can get, increase Normal and Charge Attack by 16%, just spamming the dash, you already have 2 charges so it's going to be easy to proc that, as well as the Energy Recharge is going to help out with your ultimate. Since it does have a relatively high energy cost, it's going to help out a bit. Next, Lithic Spear, I think this is a new weapon, again I was just referring to Honey Impact, but pretty much has energy recharge, plus 7% attack, and plus 3% crit rate for every unit on your team that's from leeway, max of 4 stacks. If your character originates from leeway, then you're going to be getting these buffs. When you have max stats, you have 28% increased attack, 12% increased crit rate, which is just, again, flat boosts. Don't need to proc anything, it's just straight up in the stats. Next up, we have deathmatch. Crit rate on the main stat. Attack and defense plus 16% when two enemies are nearby, and attack plus 24% when there's less than two enemies nearby. Generally, when fighting, regardless of the enemies, you're going to be getting those stat boosts. Crit rate is always good. And if you have a crit rate weapon, then all you have to do is focus on crit damage on your artifacts, as since he gets crit rate as he levels up, and the crit rate from the weapon, it should get you above 50, so focusing on damage would be the next priority. Last but not least, for the 4 star, we have Crescent Pike. Of course, the physical damage won't do much while you're in ultimate. Normal and charge attacks plus 20%. 5 seconds on elemental orb or particle, so whenever you gain one, you get that increased normal charge attack damage. As for the 3 star weapons, if you guys don't have any of these, you have white tassel, which increases your crit rate and your normal attack by 24%, and halberd, which is energy recharge and your normal attack plus 160%, and that can occur once every 10 seconds. So a lot of different options for you guys. Next, we have artifact sets. Now, the first thing I want to mention about Zhao is that he mainly utilizes plunge attacks as well as his normal attack. But again, mainly it's just the plunge attacks because that's kind of his gimmick. You get the increased jump and you, you don't want to utilize that. The thing with plunge attacks, it's not affected by normal and charge attack buffs. So for example, if you have a four piece retracing bull eyed, the normal and charge attack plus 40% is not going to go the plunge attack. It's only going to apply to your normal and charge attack. Now this is where you want to decide how you're going to build your Zhao. If you're going to go into your ultimate and just spam your normal attack, then you'd probably want to go for possibly 4-piece Gladiator, 
four piece bowl eyed again this is only if you're running a shield comp and let's say you have vortex vanquisher might as well max that out max out your shield buffs but again if you are spamming normal attacks gladiator and rechasing bull eyed four piece would not be a bad idea now if you're trying to go for the plunge attacks or just general overall damage nothing specific to one thing two piece gladiator two piece viridescent would be good i don't think four piece viridescent would be good because i think this is more of like a support type thing this would work good on like sucrose because you're not going to be doing the damage with sucrose you're going to be doing the damage with another element as it reduces the enemy's elemental resistance to the squirrel infused element a lot of elements but <laughs> Hopefully you guys are following. For 4 star sets, there's Martial Artists, which again, this is for normal attacks only, not plunge attacks. Lastly, we have Berserker. Since you're going to be in the Yaksha Mass form, you might be taking a good bit of damage, so if you're under 70% health, you get even more crit rate. This is for people that are low level, that don't have access to higher level artifacts yet, so Berserker would be a good option. Personally, I'd go for a 2-piece Gladiator, 2-piece Viridescent, as just the general damage increase is going to help out with 1. the plunge attacks, to still with the normal attacks it might not be as good as a four piece gladiator when you're spamming your normal and charge attack but again the, just a general increase for the plunge attacks again just a general increase in attack damage this is going to be more safer lastly we have the main stats and subsets this one's pretty simple he is going to be a main dps so we're going to go for attack percent animal damage bonus crit rate crit damage again it depends on what you need Substats, crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, energy recharge, elemental mastery, and attack. Any one of these would be good, preferably the first two, at least one of the first two on every artifact. But with that being said, that's Zhao for you. In conclusion, Zhao is a very, very friendly character to new players. Should you summon for him? Personally, I think you should. He's not released yet, but as of right now, his stats are very, very high. Highest attack stat right now. Very good HP and defense at that. He increases crit rate on ascensions, which is a very good stat. Secondly, his skills are very user friendly. Elemental skill is a dash, really high damage multiplier. Ultimate, get to your Yaksha Mask form, increase your jump height, spam plunge attack, spam normal attack. Just a general increase in all of his damage. As for his constellations, even a C0 is pretty good, and even a C1 would make it even better. You have a plethora of weapon options, and building artifacts might be the only hard issue really deciding on what you want on him and how you're going to be playing him but aside that very very good character and even if you don't want to use him for damage even if you just accidentally pull him and you don't want Zhao very good traveling unit make a travel team Kaching, Zhao people with movement options just going to make it easier to travel around so in my opinion very good pick very good pick hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I'm excited for Zhao I'm going to be wailing on him. Keep an eye on a stream. Since the Juvenile Jades are not going to be out yet, we're going to have to farm that on stream. So we'll be taking a look at all the new content, whatever comes to the new 1.3 update. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, learned a bit. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.